Dennis Walsh, good to have both of you. Uh, Welcome to Morning Live. Nice morning. Thank you. Dennis, a secret agent. I mean, this has got to, this, this got a James ring. Bond. Hey, it's like a bit of a James Bond. Are you living in South Africa now? No, I don't live in South London. Still you, London. you live in London. Are you here in South Africa come, just promoting the book? Come to promote the book. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a long journey, and I mean, we're talking, we're talking not. It's not that long ago. I mean, this was in the 1970s, basically. 40 years ago, 20 year old. I was 25. Aziz Pahad, Joe Slover, and others were part of all of this. Yeah. Just to say that it was like a five year period, 67, 72, 3, after Ravonia, before we could revive our underground. Because by 71 to 73, we had our own people again. Yeah. And they filled the gap between the crackdown and the almost collapse of the underground of the ANC Communist Party post Ravonia until about the early 70s when the underground could revive. In that interim period, we needed to get volunteers to come and help spread the message in the way you've, you've mentioned. So, so this is how it all started. We needed young students, and no white, better than white be young students who yes. would just get through and thinking that there's nothing wrong. Now, Dennis, you just happened to be one of them. Yep. How were you approached? Well, how was your story unfolding? Well, I was active in the Young Communists. Me and Graham, a friend of mine, who came here with me. We were in teams of two often. And we were recruited by Ronnie and Ronnie trained us. We came from the anti-apartheid movement, which was massive in Britain. I don't know if maybe some of the younger viewers may not know that, that it was everywhere. The anti-apartheid movement was organized and making sure that the message of the ANC got across in Britain. So we were likely people to be picked to, to be asked to come, and, and Ronnie approached us we came across. All right, now you keep pointing at the suitcase because what is the big deal about the suitcase? <laughs> the, the suitcase is at the center, really, of the, a mass publicity campaign. Yeah. Over 50 of these come in, and they've got a full spot in here where thousands upon thousands of leaflets are, just, are, are yeah. pressed Hidden. in. Yeah. And there's a, in the bottom, there's a small uh, explosive device, like a uh, like firework device, which is used to um, which is used to send these these leaflets exploding into the air everywhere, all over the cities of South Africa, Durban, Johannesburg, Cape Town, all the cities were for these five years. Thousands and thousands of these leaflets were coming out. There were small um, recording devices in there which blasted out the message of the ANC wow. across to. Um, across to the uh, people in the black townships. Yeah. And that was the key to this really, these suitcases with their false bottoms, with this illusion type paper. If you look at it too much this time of the day, you're gonna find <laughs> yourself growing like this, you know, I am. And uh, this really did mean that we could get thousands upon thousands of leaflets in the bottom of here. We talk about 20,000, about 20,000. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. 20,000 in this and there'll be six teams all over the what, country. What was written on these pamphlets though? I mean that, that's that's the important thing. What was the message? The ANC lives. Okay. Don't forget our leaders. And that was what was written on the in, in Zoo and Posse. Be active. We are going to be victorious. We will overthrow apartheid. Okay. Prepare to um, assist the freedom fighters coming across the borders who will need safe houses and support. Join the trade unions. Okay. Strike. Protest messages to the students and so on. Amazing. The ANC is alive. And this was the lie to the state, the special branch that said, we've smashed, we've crushed the ANC, it no longer lives. Yeah. And of course they had really badly dented the underground here. People were in exile, people were in prison. The masses of our people were intimidated, mm. you see. And suddenly the pamphlet bombs blast again front page of the Red Daily Mail. Amazing. So the uh, leaflets which got into the hands of hundreds of people around the railway stations and taxis who would spread the word, they were very that excited. That the ANC was still but there it and got working into, hard. But got into the front pages of the papers around yeah. the country, hundreds of thousands more seeing it. Yeah. And the regime just didn't know 
who on earth was doing this? But, you know, something like this with, with mm. you know, Dennis, we, we talk about it and it sounds all exciting, but something like this came with imprisonment, torture. If you were caught doing this, I mean, this was, this was a, there were huge consequences for you. Uh, you were recruited to do something in Durban. Uh, that, that, that was where your mission was. Yeah. I mean, what did you feel? Did you realize the enormity of what you were doing? We, I mean, we were excited and frightened in the equal measure. Really. We, were, we were definitely going to do this. We were totally committed to doing it. And it gave us a chance to really act in, in a way which fitted with our ideas. But we realised it was very dangerous and it was a scary, scary proposition. Two of the comrades who came with us spent many years in jail yeah. as a result of being caught sure. doing just this type of activity because ideas, the ideas of the ANC was really what was scaring the, the government of apartheid. And it, those ideas getting out there, they had to do everything to stop them. And once they caught someone, bang, they would put them in jail. No question. And, and one brother, Sean Hosey, in there for five years. Uh, yeah, Alex, Alex Mambaris' wife, uh, um, Mary Jo. Yeah. So there were some women amongst these young men, yeah. men and women, Irish, British, yeah. Greek, um, Dutch, uh, French, American, and so on. International brigade of people, internationalists who felt they needed to help people in South Africa, as in Vietnam and elsewhere. This was the spirit of the time, the internationalism, the solidarity. Of standing together. Uh, Ronnie, I have to ask you though, I mean, you've gotten quite a few. H how many contrib contributors are in here? About 35, 34. 40? 34. How, how did you come across them uh, to, to compile this book? Get well, the story some together? of them, communists, lifelong, Aziz, myself, you know, we go to Britain, they would, we would bring them up, have a beer with them. We kept these connections, not with everybody. But um, I organized a reunion, thanks to our High Commissioner, Lindiwi Mabuza, yeah. in London. She was wonderful. And we had 40, 50 of them managed to track them down. They knew each other, you see. And we had a reunion there in 2005. It was a great event. They all got on so well. And Ken Keeble then had the idea, guys, let's write about our experiences. Yeah. And this book's the result, this wonderful book. Well, I'll tell you something. It is a book, it's filled with stories, uh, exactly like Dennis's story. And you get to read all of them and see what was happening behind the scenes. Some of them exceptionally funny, but a lot of them also just uh, it's showing you the harsh face of what South Africa used to be in those days. But guys, wow, well done. Thank you so much. See I love book, yeah. this book. I think it's incredible. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. And it's a definite yeah. read for everybody out there. London recruits. Ron, you want to end off? We, we're at uh, University of Johannesburg tonight at Good. 6 o'clock, and the book's being launched. Paolo Jordan will be there with me, with Ken Keeble and, and the recruits, Wonderful. and we will engage in what this was all about and the lessons to learn for today, because international solidarity of the kind that we received yes. is very important in this world today with aggression and wars and uh, struggles still yeah. taking place. Well, nice note to end this interview. Ronnie Caswell is former intelligence minister and uh, one of our secret agents in studio with us, Dennis Welch, <laughs> also talking to us about this. So uh, the yeah. infamous yeah. suitcase. And this is the real deal. This is this <laughs> is one of the suitcases. Oh, can I just say... Yeah. Yeah. Dennis, be late. Uh, Leanne, <laughs> this, is, this is being presented to the Ravonia Museum. This one Lillian's in here? Yeah. Museum. Okay. This will be presented. Fantastic. Well, the, now you know why we're going late to news, and, and I think it's worth it to hear that story. <laughs> Thank so you. Much. Always a Thanks pleasure seeing you. Let's take a break. Ciao. We'll see you now. Bye-bye.